Assalamualaikum and greeting everyone. Welcome to my final year project presentation. My name is Ahnaf Irfan Ben Rosli and I am a final year student in Bachelor of Science on Environmental Technology. The title of my thesis is the assessment of heavy metals and water quality index WKI in Sungai Selangor, Malaysia. I'm supervised by Dr. Ismaniza Ismail and Mr. Shamsuri Abdul Manan. So, this is my presentation outline. Selangor rivers have been subjected to various anthropogenic activities such as urbanization, industrialization, and agriculture. Concerns have been expressed about the possibility of contamination and deterioration of the river's water quality as a result of increased development in surrounding areas. Heavy metals in particularly zinc, mercury, and lead can be hazardous to aquatic life as well as the health of people. The objective of this study is number one is to determine the physical and chemical parameters of water and water quality index in Sungai Selangor. Number two is to evaluate the presence of heavy metals, uh, lead, mercury, zinc in the Sungai Selangor. And number three is to analyze between heavy metals concentration, lead, mercury, zinc, and the water quality index in Sungai Selangor using principal component analysis and Pearson correlation. For literature review, the presence of heavy metals in water is a considerable concern for evaluating water qualities, giving their potential harm to both ecosystem and human well-being. Excessive level of trace metal can be found in the environment because of geological process including volcanic eruption and rock weathering. Anthropogenic activities such as municipal garbage, sewage sludge, and discharge industrial manufacturing and ore mining are all pose a significant risk of heavy metal residues accumulating on sediment at surface and then flowing through the soil, contaminating both surface water and groundwater. Several nations have used a water quality index approach that is comparable to Malaysian water quality index system. The National Water Quality Standard and WKS is a standard used to maintain the quality of Malaysian's river. Exposure to heavy metals through contaminated drinking water can have a detrimental effect on human health. Thus, reviewing the toxicological effect and detrimental health effect of drinking waters contaminated with heavy metal raise important questions. For methodology, four sampling points were taken near the water treatment plant. The water sample was collected in September and November. Temperature, DO, conductivity, salinity, and pH were all measured using YSI sonar. When down sampler were used to gather sample from the Slangor rivers for the analysis of water parameters. The sample is preserved with nitric acid for heavy metal analysis. For methodology, four sampling points were taken near the water treatment plant. The water sample was collected in September and November. Temperature, DO, conductivity, salinity, and pH were all measured using YSI sonar. When down sampler were used to gather sample from the Slangor rivers for the analysis, total suspended solid TSS, chemical oxygen demand COD, ammonitorical nitrogen NN, and bio biological oxygen demand BOD was used for water quality analysis. To analyze heavy metals, the water sample undergoes acid digestion and analyzed using ICPOES to measure metal concentration based on emitted light spectra. For result and discussion, Sungai Selangor water quality was generally acceptable in both September and November uh, with suitable pH and dissolved oxygen. September had slightly higher temperatures influenced by factors like water flow and solar radiation. Conductivity was lower in November to do increased precipitation and Station 4 consistently had high TSS, possibly due to land use activity. COD and BOD values meet water quality, water quality standard but increased in November due to runoff. Ammonia nitrogen remains stable and turbidity is higher in November, particularly Station 4, because likely due to increased runoff and anthropogenic activities. There are notable variations in water quality across different stations in Sungai Selangor, with varying WQI values in both September and November. Station 1 consistently maintains a good water quality throughout the both months, indicating lower pollution levels and a healthier status. Station 2 and 3 also generally exhibit decent water quality, falling within class 2 and 3 categories respectively. 
Station 2 show more improvement in wet season, while Station 3 experienced a slight decrease in water quality during this period. In contrast, Station 4 consistently record the poorest water quality across the station. This station is significantly impacted by construction and mining activities, highlighting the detrimental influence of human action on water quality. Heavy metal like lead, zinc, and mercury in Sungai Selangor uh, can stem from natural processes and human activities such as industry, mining, and urban runoff. In September, Station 1 and 3 had higher lead concentration, while Station 4 had elevated zinc levels. Lead levels decreased overall in November, except for a spike at Station 3, showing a special variability. Most zinc levels were within Malaysia acceptable limit for class 2 freshwater spawning. Zinc concentration significantly rise at Station 3 in November. Other stations generally meet this acceptable limit for zinc. Mercury levels remain low but exceed the Malaysian class 2 freshwaters body limit in both months, posing concerns for aquatic ecosystem and human health due to its adverse effect. PCA was used to reduce the dimensionality of the water quality data set while preserving as much variability as possible. For September, component, was, component 1 is characterized by a strong positive association with pH and dissolved oxygen and a negative association with suspended solid and chemical oxygen demand. This suggests that higher pH and DO levels are typically found in areas with lower concentration of suspended solid and COD. Component 2 reveals a different pattern, with American nitrogen having the highest positive loading, suggesting its prevalence in certain areas, and turbidity showing the most negative loading, indicating that higher nitrogen levels might correlate with clearer water. In November, Component 1 was primarily influenced by ammonium nitrogen, lead and zinc, suggesting that mineral pollutants possibly from anthropogenic sources contribute most to the variance captured by this component. Conversely, electrical conductivity and pH show a strong negative loading, indicating an inverse relationship with Component 1, possibly associated with the different sources of natural river characteristics. Component 2 was in positively influenced by BOD and mercury, suggesting that pollution sources such as wastewater, discharge, or agricultural runoff contribute to the organic load in the river. The Pearson correlation coefficient provides variable insight into the relationship between water quality parameters, highlighting the influence of various factors on heavy metals and other biophysical variables. In September, a very strong negative correlation was observed between suspended solid and dissolved oxygen, which is negative 0.996, indicating that higher concentration of suspended particle in the water significantly decreased the availability oxygen for aquatic life. Similarly, BOD and suspended solid were strongly negative correlated, which is negative 0.990 suggesting that more suspended particles may lead to lower biological activities due to reduced light penetration, affecting photosynthesis. In November, the correlation between suspended solid and dissolved oxygen remained negative, which is negative 0.97, reaffirming the consistent inverse relationship between these two variables across seasons. There was a positive correlation between lead and COD, which is 0.985, suggesting that a shared source or similar transport mechanism within the river ecosystem. Zinc also showed a strong positive correlation with COD, which is 0.921, implying that zinc levels may be influenced by the presence of organic and inorganic substances that deplete oxygen in the water. In conclusion, the finding from the investigation into the river's water quality reveal a complex interplay of variables impacting the ecosystem with notable correlation between various pollutants such as suspended solid, dissolved oxygen, and heavy metals like zinc and lead and mercury. This step will be a vital in maintaining the integrity of Sungai Selangor, assuring that it continues to sustain a healthy aquatic system and provide a safe treated water for human use. Our study achieved a comprehensive understanding of the water quality dynamic in Sungai Selangor. 
A key limitation of this study arises from the relatively limited number of sampling location. It is recommended to increase the geographical spread and density of location. This expands coverage providing insight, localized impact and facilitating targeted intervention strategies. Strengthening policies enforcement can ensure compliance with environmental standards, thereby reducing the introduction of contaminants into the waterways. The implementation of total maximum daily load in the Slango River Basin is also seen as a crucial step towards managing and improving water quality. This is my reference and thank you for watching my Finding Your Project video.